Hey, before you dive into 3JS and start building wild projects, there are a few essentials you should know. Think of this as your pre-flight checklist. Once you've got these skills in place, learning 3JS will feel easier and smoother. This guide is based on the prerequisites from 3JS.org, a wonderful guide um, with lots of clear examples. Oh, and it's also based on my personal experience and the examples I give are all projects that you can see in my channel, Robot Bobby. Let's go. I've recently launched channel memberships. Now you can access my content early, check out members only videos and enjoy discounted merch. First things first, the web isn't just JavaScript. There's HTML, CSS, and the DOM. You should know how to write some basic HTML. You know how to uh, create a div, canvas, a script, nothing crazy. Basically, it's just the web page as a tree of elements that you can grab, manipulate, and so on. It's a model of objects in a document. Um, you should understand a little bit of CSS, at least how selectors work. You can style your scene and center your canvas. So in this example here, I've got an element, a canvas element called three canvas. And if I check out the CSS rule for it, I'm saying, hey, you're behind everything else. If I remove that rule, it's on top of most of the things in the scene, for example. Also, if I, if I take off this CSS positioning, it's actually, it'll disappear when I scroll. Now it behaves as I expect it to. Use ES6 modules. What are ES6 modules? It's, here, let me show you an example. At the bottom of all my markup, I've got a script tag here. And there's this type equals module property on that script tag. That's a module. And that's telling the browser, hey, that script that I'm going to load, it's going to load modules too. Without that type equals module, this would throw errors. Really? Yeah, really. Let's just remove it, save, and let's see. You cannot use an import statement outside of a module. So add that back. Now Bob's your uncle. Also check out import maps. These go hand in hand. Um, I'm defining this three variable and saying it's this uh, content delivery network address. And that allows me to easily import 3JS like that. It's very easy. Don't stress about meta tags, however. Right now, we're not worried about SEO and those kinds of things. Don't worry about these. Okay, JavaScript skills. Let's talk about JavaScript. It's the core of everything you'll write in 3JS, along with shaders. Variables. Use constant let, don't use var. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Just um, for those who've been writing JavaScript for more than 10 years, you recall that there's a var keyword that you used, used to declare variables. You don't use that anymore. Arrays and objects. These are the, the meat and potatoes of your JavaScript. Um, get comfy with array methods like for each, map, and filter. These are going to be really handy. Um, hey, there's some examples of that in this file right here. I've got a bunch of objects all kind of undulating around in the scene. I'm defining them and adding them to the scene and then saying, hey, let's see, it's this thing group here. Look at this, this thing group has a update method. I'm saying, hey, for each of your children, update, each children is gonna update itself. And inside of that update method, I'm calling this, that's pretty great. What if I said 20? Woo! That's unusable. 8.5 is what I had before. Kind of like this. That's for each. Um, also, map and filter. I'll give you an example of those too. And spinning neon cubes. I'm using points.map to offset each point by 0.5. All these points are defined here as a simple uh, cube shape. And I'm offsetting them. If I offset them by zero, then they all kind of orbit around that one corner there. 
and um, this is just uh, gives me some flexibility to deal with all of these sort of points instead of, instead of having to iterate through each one of these and change the value. In this simple particle effects example, I'm using this filter method on an array to pull out only those particles that have a life that's greater than zero. Learn to use destructuring with objects and arrays. Uh, I got an example of that. So in this example, I'm using the Rapier physics engine and I'm going to use destructuring in this debug view, for example, where the physics engine provides this debug render. And I'm going to pull out of that debug render all the vertices and the colors and then use those to create uh, points, to, to set properties on the points geometry. So there I'm doing some destructuring. Understand the shortcut syntax for declaring objects. Most of the time when I'm creating materials inside of 3JS, I'm using that shortcut syntax. For example, in this earth vertices, I'm, I'm creating a material here, this points material. The vertex shader and the fragment shader are just kind of floating out here. They don't have a value assigned to them because the value is the same name as the property. Vertex shader, that's the, that's the thing I'm assigning. And fragment shader, that's the thing I'm assigning here. This is what it looks like otherwise. That's what it would look like if we didn't have that shorthand, that assignment shorthand. Learn to use the rest and spread operators inside of JavaScript. The dot, dot, dot is your friend. Check this out. Inside here, I'm using a raycaster to figure out if my laser bolt is impacting either the wormhole itself or these little boxes. Check it out. I, use, I do that here by using this intersects objects method. I'm going to pass an array of the objects to check. I want to check the tube and I want to check the boxes. The way I'm doing that is by passing this boxes array, but I unpack it using this dot, dot, dot. That's saying, take the contents of that array and just blah, take, give me the contents, not the array. Let me know in the comments, what's your least favorite or your most favorite feature of JavaScript or 3JS. Learn how to use async and await. Um, it's especially useful for loading things. Let's have a look at this load GLTF model. And here I'm using this load async method. And uh, along with that, I'm saying await the results of this function call and assign it to this GLB. This allows me to just use it like a regular variable that's not um, asynchronous. I wanted to talk a little bit more about async await by delving into what this method has behind the scenes. If we jump into the loaders in the extras for 3JS, you see this GLTF loader and this load async. And all it is, it's returning a promise. Discussions about promises are a little outside the scope of this tutorial, but I've included links in the description to read more about promises and also read more about async await. The thing about async await is it hides the underlying promises workflow, but I think that's fine because it allows you to write code faster and it's easier. There are lots of situations like in a production environment that you'd want to have a better understanding. But for our purposes of quickly writing and creating cool stuff, it's okay to use async and await. Template, template literals are strings. Uh, I think there might be an example in here. If I was fine, dollar curly. Nope. But there is an example in the solar system. In this example, I'm loading up all of these little rock models to use as an asteroid belt in this, this uh, portrayal of a solar system. Here, they're named rock one, two, and three. And I'm going through and loading those up using this template string. I construct the path to them. They're in the rocks directory like that and say, boom, 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 load those up. It's a really handy way to create uh, a string dynamically. Functional factoring. Break things into small named functions. We'll say, hang on, liquid glass. Yeah. There's a lot happening in this example. I'm using a physics engine 
I'm using a uh, Raycaster and I'm using these, this um, blobby surface. What's it called? Metaballs. So a lot's happening. So it's helpful to bundle things up so that it's more understandable and, and easier to read later. A few of the functional bits that I want to call out in here. There's the part where I grab the, this mouse ball. I think it's called the mouse ball. Yeah, right here. So I just bundled up a ton of functionality in here and it makes it clearly really easy to understand too. I think another one is the render debug view when I want to understand, well, you know what debug view is here. If I just uncomment this, I could just put this all in the animate method, but wouldn't that be complicated? This now reads like a menu. It's really easy to understand, I think. And the same with handle raycast. I can comment that out easily and just test my scene without it. Now if I'm moving my mouse around, it's not really dealing with it. That's really cool too. So the benefit of this approach is you're going to write you're, you're going to name your functions and your variables in a way that kind of makes, um, extra comments unnecessary. Um, each of these functions should do one thing and they should return one thing or return nothing, whatever. And they don't rely on global variables for the most part. In the example of the, yeah, let's see, handle raycast, I'm kind of relying on this mouse pause as well as mouse plane that's assigned outside. For any of the, the tips I'm, I'm giving you right now, don't stick to them too much and don't get hung up on them too much. The point of our, our creation and exploration is to put things together and experiment and try different things out quickly without getting hung up on these best practices. <clears throat> I want to talk about how 3JS creates elements, DOM elements. When you create a new renderer, you automatically get a DOM element created, a canvas element. And then I use this code here, this line to, uh, to add that to the body. If I comment that out, we get nothing, uh, nothing. Remember that the browser runs JavaScript only through events and callbacks. It can be easy to forget that because 3JS is going to handle that for us with the, um, with inside of our animation loop, I'm using request animation here, frame here to call it every frame. You could also use the set animation loop method that 3JS offers. So yeah, you should know what a closure is. Understand what the closure is. Here's an example. I'm getting a thing, which is one of these models. And inside of here. I'm defining a few variables that I can use even after I've called this function. Um, each one of these meshes is updating itself. And each one has a reference to this oscillation speed, which I've defined outside of the function and the oscillation range as well as range. So a closure, here's the definition from the MDN, by the way, great resource, uh, Mozilla developer network. It's a function that remembers the variables around it. Every time you create a function, you're creating a closure. It's just how JavaScript works. Avoid using this. In JavaScript, this could be a bunch of different things, depending on the context. Inside of a class, when you use this, that's a reference to that instance of that class. That's pretty straightforward probably like a lot of other languages too. But for example, uh, if you create an event listener and assigned it to a DOM element, like a button or the body, this refers to that element, not a class. And there are even other examples, uh, with different ver values for this. Avoid using this and you'll avoid all of that confusion. That's what I recommend. Some sometimes you, you can't. And I understand that the 3JS library is written with classes and lots of references, lots of use of it, this keyword, I, I choose not to use it in mine. Um, yeah, let's talk about tools real quick. I'm using Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot. It's free and it'll help you write boilerplate code faster and spot bugs that you might miss otherwise. And it kind of learns as you type and it'll help you just write code faster. So recommend it. Um, Learn more about JavaScript. There are some authors out there uh, on 
the more code you read by people who can write JavaScript, the better your code will be. Um, check out Douglas Crockford. He's got a couple of books on JavaScript. He's a key figure in JavaScript's history. Uh, JavaScript, the good parts, as well as how JavaScript works. Both highly recommended. Martin Fowler's book, Refactoring, all written in JavaScript. Excellent read. So that's your checklist. Get a good handle on these and you'll be ready to take flight with 3JS. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.